is wise and understanding among you. Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. I know Dan and I certainly look forward to the time when we can gather to worship together again. If you are part of our congregation, please know that you will be notified when we get clearance from the province indicating that we can safely resume in-person services. We will also put notices of the same online. Next Sunday will be the first one in June, so we'll, we will be celebrating communion. Please prepare your hearts and minds for that service as we come to the Lord's table. God bless you and yours. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. Thank you for giving your only begotten Son that we could be saved. Thank you for the power of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. We acknowledge that we are blessed beyond measure and we want to give you thanks. You have provided for us. We pray for our country today and thank you for the privilege of living here. Your word says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And we pray that would be a reality. We pray for Prime Minister Trudeau, Premier Ford, and the men and women in government. May they have the wisdom and the courage to govern in righteousness and truth. We pray for the men and women in the military in many places around the world. They face harm and danger every day, and we pray for their protection. We pray that the plans of evil men will be confused and never be brought to pass. Father, our hearts go out to the families of victims in the shooting in San Jose, California, and we pray for them. We pray for those mourning loss because of the boat sinking in the Niger River. We pray for those suffering from black fungus in India. Comfort them in their grief, heal those who are sick, and mobilize citizens and authorities so that the circumstances for the mentally ill, for the poor and the needy would improve. Father, we mourn with the indigenous families represented by the 215 buried children found at a BC residential school site. Help the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation be another way to foster healing and forgiveness. For the Susis, the Mambuscans, and all who work on the mission field, God, we ask for your direction and security. We pray for our own communities where we live and work and for the thousands of people that we have contact with every day. May the spirit of Christ be seen in us in all situations. Bless the work of the hands of those who farm, field, and pasture. Multiply their crops and livestock that you, Lord, may be glorified. Help us to feed and clothe and protect those who are in need. Help your church, wherever it is found in the world, help it to be a vibrant branch in each community. Help us to witness Jesus. Help us to make disciples and baptize them in your name. Father, in our upcoming assembly of Baptist churches of Ontario and Quebec, we ask that you would help us to discern the leadings of your Holy Spirit that decisions made would be according to your will. Thank you for the way the churches in Wyarton work together. Thank you for the unity we know as believers within our congregation. Thank you that Gladys has safely moved. Thank you that Johanna has been able to be home. Thank you that George is out of hospital. Thank you for taking care of our families. 
Thank you for the great care received by those in nursing homes and retirement residences. Encourage and uplift the staff there and in hospitals and hospices. For those who mourn for the McNabb family and all those known to us, or those who are in hospice care, Lord, we ask that your love and assurance of salvation would envelop them and comfort them. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, that the number suffering from COVID is decreasing in this province, but we continue to ask you that you would heal those who are suffering from this coronavirus. Halt the rates of infections here and around the world that you would be honored. We thank you for the medicines and treatments received by each one of us over the course of our lives. We thank you for inspiring researchers and giving them an understanding of what you have created. Father, we ask that you would work a miracle in Johanna, in George and Annika, and Elsie and Henry and Betty, and all who need your touch. We know you are able and we ask according to your perfect will. Lord, we ask that you would reveal yourself to all those who are weary, to all those who feel they are suffering mentally and emotionally. Lord, bless people with faith in you so that they can claim your peace, so they can find purpose, so they can understand that you love them. Help people to accept you as their savior, Lord, for it would solve so many of their problems. None of us are worthy of your grace, for we know we have offended you in sinful ways. Forgive us and pour your spirit on your people. As you have taught us to pray, let us pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 94. Take notice, you senseless ones among the people. Does he who fashioned the ear not hear? Does he who disciplines nations not punish? The Lord knows all human plans. Blessed is the one you discipline, Lord, the one you teach from your law. For the Lord will not reject his people. Judgment will again be founded on righteousness. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against evildoers? When I said, my foot is slipping, When anxiety was great within me, can a corrupt throne be allied with you, a throne that brings on misery by its decrees? But the Lord has become my fortress.
Hear the word of God as it is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 16. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. The person with the spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Before I begin, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day We thank you that you have opened our eyes to faith in Christ. Father, we thank you for the blessings of your salvation. We thank you for the peace we know through forgiveness, through faith in you. And Father, we ask that you would teach us through your word today that what is spoken here will glorify you. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Ask for whatever you want me to give you. What would you ask for if someone said that to you? Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Well, that is the question that God, our Most High, the Holy One of Israel, asked King Solomon in a dream. And the king's reply, he asked the Lord that he be given a discerning heart to govern his people, and to distinguish between right and wrong. King Solomon asked for a discerning heart, that he could distinguish between right and wrong. Solomon, a servant king of the heavenly king of kings, asked for wisdom, for the ability to judge between good and evil. The Bible records that the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Desiring wisdom pleases God. That's what that scripture tells us. Desiring wisdom pleases God. In May of 2012, a 32-carat Burmese ruby 
and diamond ring that was part of the collection of a Lily Safra, one of the richest women in the world at the time, was sold at an auction. The pre-auction estimate for the sale was three to $5 million, but the final sale price ended up at $6.7 million. It is believed to be the most expensive ruby ever sold. As valuable as rubies are, the Bible tells us that wisdom, the ability to make a decision based on the combination of knowledge, experience, and intuitive understanding is far better and more valuable than rubies. No earthly treasure can compare to wisdom because nothing else offers the same protection, benefits, and blessings than wisdom does. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Before we go any further though, I want to stress that knowledge and wisdom are two different things. They work together, but knowledge is facts, information and skills acquired by a person through experience or education the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. Whereas in this context, wisdom encompasses the ability to know and apply spiritual truths in a, in a smart way. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. In the eighth chapter of this book, Paul states, we all possess knowledge. We all possess worldly knowledge, knowledge that enables us to function, to earn a living and to interact with others. Some of you know how to hang a blind, braille a sail, create dovetail joints, read music, paint, alter a dress or change a dressing. We all possess knowledge, but as scripture warns, knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Someone once said knowledge is like underwear. It's useful to have it, but not necessary to show it off. That's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is proud that it knows so much. Wisdom is humble that it knows so little. Knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens. Knowledge is knowing what to say. Wisdom is knowing when to say it. Most important of all, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. How sad the situation of those who are always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. That truth being that there is one God and one mediator between God and human beings, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Jesus, as the son of God, died, was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven, where he reigns forevermore. For those who acknowledge their sin before him and declare Jesus as Savior, he is the one in whom all believers boast. We boast not in our knowledge or skill set, not because of our possessions or good works. As Christians, we boast in Jesus, the power of God, the wisdom of God. For he is the author and endower of all we have through faith. God graciously blesses us with his spirit when we come to faith in Christ. Did you notice in today's reading that it says as believers, as those gifted with the Holy Spirit, we have the mind of Christ. Now that is an utterly incredible statement. To explain that phrase, my Bible references me back to the words of our Redeemer himself who said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made, no, made known to you. 
having the mind of Christ, that strong tower, the bright and morning star, means we are friends to whom Jesus taught the master's business. As we pray and obey, as we come to know the word of God, we mature. In a business model, we move from being silent partners that contribute but don't do anything on a day-to-day -day basis to becoming a full partner that take on both the work and the liability. Having the mind of Christ means that we can discern spiritual things that the natural man or the unbeliever cannot understand or see. Having the mind of Christ is the same as being indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and both are attained through faith at the moment of salvation. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, God has made us partakers of the divine nature so that we can have all things that pertain to life and godliness, godliness through the knowledge of himself. The highest goal of learning is to know God. In fact, the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. That humbling of self, that recognition of who God is and what he has done for you and for me. To be in awe of him, to be thankful, to praise him, to know he is creator and judge. That is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. The Greek word for wisdom, sophos, means the ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action based on knowledge and understanding. We are not seeking after wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. The redemption, reconciliation, and restoration through, through Christ has been revealed through the Spirit. As believers, what we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. I know I lose sight of the power of this gift. I would hazard a guess that as at some point or other, all believers forget just what God has given us in the person of the Holy Spirit. No one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And it is that very same Spirit that teaches us and explains spiritual realities to us. That's why in today's world, we seem to be speaking another language. To argue against worshiping created things instead of the Lord Almighty Creator, to suggest that life is indeed sacred, that there are boundaries even for love. These are truths that the person without the Spirit does not accept but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Suggesting that Jesus was the divine Son of God and much more than a great prophet, to assert that belief in his death and resurrection is the only way to forgiveness and eternal life, these truths are not welcome these days, where tolerance and acceptance of all faith systems is required. We are labeled close-minded because we refuse to compromise the truth of God's word. We are considered weak because we seem to need God on a daily basis, if not a second, every second basis of the day to deal with life's problems. Earthly wisdom appeals to the senses and the emotion and the self. 
In contrast, the wisdom that is from God reflects him. In fact, it focuses on him. Today's reading tells us that the person with the spirit makes judgments about all things, which means that we are to examine well, to search out, to sift out the truth. While earthly wisdom says, always follow your heart, godly wisdom tells us in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the heart is deceitful above all things. While earthly wisdom says seeing is believing, godly wisdom tells us in John 20, 29, that blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. While earthly wisdom says love your family and friends, godly wisdom tells us in Matthew 5, verses 43 to 47, to also love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. While earthly wisdom says there are many ways to God, godly wisdom tells us in Acts 4, verse 12, that there is only one way to God, Jesus Christ. It states salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. The gospel of Jesus is not a message born out of hate. The message of the cross may seem foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is the roadmap meant to save people from destruction and pain, to pull them from the fire, to give them peace and hope and everlasting life. We need to be cross wise. We need to be able to explain that mercy, grace and forgiveness. That, that those that mercy, grace and forgiveness are available to all when we approach the throne of God with humility and repentance. That's why we have the gospels so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Believing in God's love, that he sent his son Jesus to die as payment for our sin in order to provide the means for our forgiveness when we believe in him as our risen Savior. That's the message of hope and wisdom that the Gospels inspire. The book of Colossians defines it thusly. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you are alienated from God and your, were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. Through faith in Jesus, we are reconciled. This is godly wisdom. This is the language of love communicated to us through the scriptures. A few years ago, Dan and I went to Portugal without knowing the language. People speaking Portuguese around us could have been saying anything about us as we strolled around in our cork souvenir hats. But as soon as we spoke English, they switched over so we could understand one another. As Christ's faithful, gifted with the Holy Spirit, we do kind of speak a different language. Amongst us, there are different levels of fluency and maturity for sure. But we have to remember that when we are giving an answer to anyone who asks us to give the reason for the hope we have, we have to do it with gentleness and respect. We cannot just 
speak wisely. We need to heed the spirit of God and apply spiritual realities to our lives. For we witness God not only in what we say, but in our everyday behavior. There's a story about a Dr. Richard Halverson when he was the US Senate chaplain. He spoke, a, he spoke before a group of evangelicals who had expressed their anger about Congress's inactivity on the subject of school prayer. They were irritated that Congress had not acted with a strong initiative to restore prayer in schools. To these who were seeking greater initiative from the government, Dr. Halverson asked, how many of you have prayed with your children this month outside of church? Nobody raised their hand. Spiritual initiative starts in the home, not on Capitol Hill. It's one thing to be knowledgeable or wise, and it's another thing to apply those skills. Remember how Solomon asked God to give him a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong when God offered him anything he would like. Solomon's request for wisdom so that he could govern his people and distinguish between right and wrong involved a discerning heart. The wisdom of God involves a change of heart. The anointing of a believer with the Holy Spirit is not oil sitting on the surface of water. The Spirit permeates our hearts to reveal Jesus, the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God hidden in the cross, revealed by the Spirit. May God have mercy upon us and grow us up in his wisdom through the workings of his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we know we are unworthy, yet in your great mercy, because of your great love for us, you have blessed us with Jesus. Thank you for the gift of faith in Jesus, our risen Redeemer. Thank you for his light in our lives. Thank you for the indwelling of your spirit within all who believe. Help us to grow in your wisdom and to herald your good news with gentleness and fear so that souls would return to you. In Jesus, our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. I want to leave you with a final benediction taken from the book of Romans and Philippians. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you, but I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen.